Hello once again, my dear children. Today, as promised, we're looking at the concept of complete dominance. And if you look in here, my darlings, it says a genetic cross where the dominant allele masks or blocks the expression of the recessive allele. We've already spoken about a dominant allele and a recessive allele. And we've already spoken about heterozygous where the dominant allele masks the expression of the recessive allele. So that type of inheritance where you have a dominant allele and a recessive allele, that is called complete dominance. So we'll be looking at a couple of examples on complete dominance. But suffice for you to know for the moment that it is based on the first lesson that we have done already. And if you look at these, this particular cross here, my dear children, they're showing you a tall plant cross a short plant and all of the plants that were produced were tall. Now let's look at the genotypes. So automatically you can see the tallness is dominant and this is a homozygous dominant tall plant cross a homozygous recessive short plant and all the offspring that are produced are tall with the genotype capital T small t. Remember this is a heterozygous condition and in a heterozygous condition the dominant allele will show in the phenotype because the dominant masks the recessive so 100% of the offspring would be tall. This by the way is Mendel's law of dominance, which says that, oh, by the way, you've got to know these laws. There are three laws you have to know. Let's start off with the first law, the law of dominance, which states that if you cross two homozygous or pure breeding, pure breeding is homozygous organisms with contrasting characteristics. Now, what do you mean by contrasting characteristics? Black and white, tall and short, attached, unattached, those are contrasting characteristics. If you cross two homozygous organisms with contrasting characteristics, all of the offspring in the F1 generation will show the dominant characteristic. So that's exactly what we did. We crossed a homozygous tall with a homozygous short, and all of the offspring were tall. That's following Mendel's law of dominance. There are so many questions on complete dominance, and we'll begin by looking at one of the questions. I will scroll down to one of the questions, which uses the concept of being able to roll your tongue as being the dominant characteristic and not being able to roll your tongue as the recessive characteristic. But my dear children, you have to know how to write out a genetic cross. Two marks if you just know the format. Okay, and you can't afford to lose these two marks. Let's look at the format. P1 represents your first set of parents. Who are the parents that are crossed? First of all, you've got to write down their phenotype and their genotype. And then you're going to use the term meiosis. By the way, you're not going to be using these brackets. These brackets are to show you how those two marks are given, should you know your format. The first mark is given for writing P1 and F1 in the correct order, in the correct positions. P1, once again, your parents. F1, your offspring. Okay. And the second mark is given to write down meiosis and fertilization in the correct position. Okay, so let's look at it. Phenotype, where you write, for example, tongue roller cross non-tongue non roller. Genotype, are they homozygous or are they heterozygous? Okay, or are they homozygous recessive or homozygous dominant? So you write two letters for the genotype of the parent, two letters for the genotype of the other parent. Meiosis, and then for gametes, for each gamete that results from each parent, they will be carrying only one letter. 
because here is Mendel's second law, and that's Mendel's law of segregation, which states that, that for every characteristic having two alleles, during meiosis, the two alleles separate out such that each gamete has only one of the two alleles, okay? So the two alleles for each characteristic separate out during meiosis such that each gamete has only one of the two alleles. So if my genotype was, let's go back here, my darlings, if my genotype was capital T, capital T in the organism or the daddy, so during meiosis, what is formed from a daddy? Sperms. So each sperm that is formed will have only one of these. So all the sperms in this case would have one capital T. In this case, all the sperms would have one small t. But if you look at this case here, 50% of the sperms would have capital T and 50% of the sperms would have small t. So the two alleles separate out into the gametes. Does that make sense? Good. Let's continue. So you will show your gametes and then you will show what would happen if that sperm meet, met that egg or if that sperm met that egg because that's what happens during fertilization. A sperm meets an egg. And you can show it using a Punnett square, okay? So very importantly, when you're using a Punnett square, let's try something here, my dear children, okay? So if I have in this particular block here, if the parent was, there was a capital T there, and in this particular block here, let me just draw it again, my dear children. So my darlings, I am actually saying that the parent had a genotype capital T, small t. And when the gametes were formed, the capital T and small t separated out into the gametes. So let's see if the other parent was small t. And here we go. Small t, small t. Sorry about that. Okay. So if the one parent was capital T, small t, that means that parent was heterozygous tongue roller, if tongue rolling was a dominant characteristic. And if the other parent was small t, small t, that means that parent showed the recessive characteristic and couldn't roll the tongue. What would happen now? The gametes would either have capital T, small t, or the gametes of the other parent would have small t, small t. Now, what would happen if that gamete met that gamete? Let's see, my dear children. a bit laborious, but if that gamete met that gamete, then my first possible offspring would have capital T, small t, okay? And then if that gamete met that gamete, let's see what happens. Okay. Sorry, goodness me. Let's go back. Forgive me, this is the first time. Okay, text again. All right, sorry about that, my darlings. Assume you can remember everything. Okay, let me just move this up a little bit here. Okay, if that capital T met that small t, it'll be capital T, small t. Quite a boo-boo we've made, okay? So we've got capital T, small t there, capital T, small t there. You would have them in the blocks, not like how, how I have done. So what would happen, my dear children, if this small t met that small t? No. If that small t met that small t, that means if that gamete met that gamete, what would my offspring look like? Small t, small t. 
And if that small t met that small t, let's just do it again. And we would have the next possible offspring being, here we go, small t, small t. So what do you see here? If you had a parent who is capital T, small t, and if that parent met with mated with a parent small t small t then 50 percent of my offspring would be capital t small t and the other 50 percent would be small t small t what does that mean 50 percent would be heterozygous tongue roller 50 percent would be homozygous non-tongue roller now even then i'm wrong because that is what your children generally say, ma'am. 50% of them would be able to roll their tongue, 50% would not be able to roll their tongue. And that is wrong, technically. Because they, what is right is that there's a 50% chance that an offspring would be a tongue roller. And there's also a 50% chance that the offspring would be a non-tongue roller. That's the correct way. So in other words, how did I get 50% you'd want to know? This is two out of the possible four. This is also two out of the possible four times 100 over one. So what is my genotypic ratio? Ratios must also be, always be brought down to the simplest form. So I've got two heterozygous tall, two homozygous short. Bring it down to the simplest. How do you form a ratio? Take the smallest number, divide by itself. So here, two and two are identical. So two divided by two will give you one. Two divided by two will give you one. So I've got a genotypic ratio, one is to one. What would be my phenotypic ratio? Yes, 50% chance there would be tongue rollers and a 50% chance there would be non-tongue rollers. So my phenotypic ratio is also one is to one. So in a cross where you have a heterozygous organism cross a homozygous recessive, you always get the genotypic ratio one is to one and phenotypic ratio one is to one. Yep. So let's see, let's undo. And let's see what would happen if I had the parents if I had the parents being slightly different, okay? So if I had the parents being a heterozygous tongue roller cross a heterozygous tongue roller, okay, my dear children? And remember I told you, if you attach a characteristic next to the term heterozygous, that characteristic is the dominant characteristic. So heterozygous tongue roller would mean Rolling your tongue would be a dominant characteristic. So how would I show a heterozygous organism? Two different letters. So here, it'll be capital T, small t. So when I'm forming gametes, I would have the capital T going out into 50% of my gametes. And here, my dear children, let me just get this a little neater for you. And when I perfect this, I promise you, I'm gonna be doing a better job. But for the moment, bear with me. You have no choice. Okay, that's the gametes and the parents in the first set of parents. Now, what would happen in the other set of parents that is also heterozygous? Of course, I'll have the identical gametes. So here I'd have 50% of my gametes being capital T and my gametes in this case, sorry. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Getting a little better. Small t. Now, those are my gametes formed. So what would happen if that gamete met that gamete? No, you would have learned by now. This is what would happen. A capital T meeting a capital T I am going to land up with an organism having two capital T. In other words, there is a chance that I could have a homozygous tongue roller. 
If that capital T met that capital T, yes, what would happen? Yes, you're absolutely right. I would have an organism having this particular genotype, capital T, small t. And how would this organism appear, phenotype? Once again, tongue roller, but this is a heterozygous tongue roller. Now, if that gamete met that gamete, let's see. Here we go. Once again, you'll have capital T, small t. Notice how we're doing our process. Once again, we got a tongue roller, heterozygous. And let's look at the last one. If that T met that T, we're making T. You're gonna have small T, small T. So what is the phenotype of that? Oh, by the way, what's the genotype? Homozygous, yes, two recessives, non-tongue roller. So I've got a homozygous non-tongue roller, phenotypically non-tongue roller. So I've got three tongue rollers and one non-tongue roller, giving me the ratio three is to one in my phenotype. Three is to one. Okay. Typical phenotype if I cross two heterozygous organisms. Typical phenotype. Three is to one. What is my genotype? This is one homozygous tall, two heterozygous tall. So one is to two is to one homozygous short. So my genotypic ratio is one is to two is to one. Once again, my phenotypic ratio is three is to one. Please notice, they almost always ask you about heterozygous organism cross a heterozygous organism. Once again, phenotypic ratio, three is to one because three will bear the dominant characteristic. One will bear the recessive characteristic. Genotypic ratio, one is to two is to one. Remember, this is this genotype is different from these genotypes. Yeah? So it's one is to two is to one. Oh, what a mouthful. No? Let's see if you can work out this cross where you cross a heterozygous parent, capital T, small t, who is a tongue roller with a homozygous recessive one. Did I do this? Did I do this? And if I did, Let's see if you'd get this right. And you'll share the answer with me in the next video.